this is Anne from Odulcina's Crab. I am back today with the little houses. Those of you who owns the kit will surely understand why I love to do little houses because it is addictive. So let me show you a couple of the little houses that I've done lately because I have done a little house for my lap book project, which is my last series. And, um, and of course I had to get all of my little kit from um, out on my table and I couldn't help myself but to create more and more and more. So um, I came up with new ideas using those little houses and I want to share with you. This is the last one that I have from the little video that I did previous months ago on how to create a booklet using only three papers and one um, tracing paper and you have a pocket here. So there's a whole tutorial on this one. It is still to date one of my favorite project and I'm gonna do more for sure. But if you want to know the sequence and how to trim your paper or tear it down and organize the journal like this, look in the description below and you're gonna have the whole a link to the tutorial. So I created that house and if you look, look how big it is. It's the same length, but it's longer. And it's because I wanted a different roof. So um, it came up with a house like that and I glued it on the corrugated cardboard. And then I got an idea to convert this into a junk journal, like kind of a slim junk journal. So let me show you how I changed the roof first because because in my add-on kit, there's two kits. You have the little houses kit and you have the add-on kit. And the add-on kit gives you different roofs that are a little bit more shabby chic with lots of, you can see laces and doilies there. And you also have more windows and doors and you can have the, the plain ones, but the same doors and windows, you have them with Christmassy stuff, like little gingerbread and lights and yeah, snowmen. You have some with, sorry, I've used a couple already, but dogs and for animal lovers. So dogs and cats and birds and even squirrels. And you have a page with flowers for summer for flower lovers. So those roofs, I wanted to use this one here on top of this house. And, um, but this house was not, because as you can see, there's always three kinds of roof. They don't have the same angles on the roofs. So the house was like this, from the right side, this kind of roof, this one here was this kind of roof, and this is the other kind of roof. So they were not compatible. And this is how I ended up gluing it and making a, a longer house. Then I needed to back it, and I backed it with a corrugated cardboard. And I just love it. So let's play. I'm going to take I'm going to take one of those houses where the roof is in an angle and I'm going to put a different roof. So same thing even if you don't have the add-on kit, you can simply uh pick the roof Pick the roof of another house to kind of mix them. So 
So I have my house and you can see that the roof is not the same angle. So the only thing I, I'll need to do is to glue it higher, either here or here, where you want. And, well, I'm going to need to back this house. It could be a cardstock or any papers, but in this case, I'm going to glue it to the corrugated cardboard to make a junk journal cover out of it. So I'm going to create this little house and you're going to see how I um, set up my table is I have all my doors that are obviously doors or the girls that are kind of acting like a door. I have all my long strips that can act like a door if they're large enough or for the chimney or even I can cut them and they can do windows. I have all my little pieces, the scrap pieces that are to decorate and I have a pile of windows here already cut. So this helps me that I have them separated and at the end I use a glycine bag and I just put them separately so the next time I want to create little houses they're not all mixed together. You see what I mean? <laughs> First I'm gonna need my ink for sure. Some houses I don't ink and some others I feel like I want to ink. It's really a matter of personal taste. And I'll put just one line here because I'm not sure where the roof ends. So I'm just going to put, this is safe to put glue there. I'm going to align it. I'll go with the text. And I'm going to then glue the remaining of the roof at the back. And here we go. All right. Now, what do we want? You, you see, those can really be acting like a door. And even you can put two together so you can have a girl, maybe not the good color, but you can mix. So, I might want to decide what I want first. Yeah, I can even, oh wow, love that. Okay, just need this is even better. And I could, if I want, I could maybe put a strip here and change the decoration so this part here is not that long kind of acting like a second level and I can add more to so those stripes are there for that to help you when you need papers that are matching you have some in every possible color that I could think of and um, you simply use them as you wish but don't forget they're perfect for any ephemera decoration in your junk journal as well. That gives you plenty of choices with writing and different pattern. See, I don't know what I want. Look at that. This is perfect. I don't know if I want to put, I love that lady there, but maybe I can try with a regular door. So this door goes this way. Okay, either a door. I love the door. Let me see what I can do here. So beside the door, I can put a little window 
and it's one of the doors with the flowers. You see? I am in love with those little square windows. I love them. They can be... I typically put two on the side. Or one that is longer. You have those two that are a little bit bigger. And you have this kind too. And it's from the add-on kit. You see it has a curtain with laces oh i love this one it's kind of the perfect size match so maybe i can put something here to kind of divide the floors that that would be the second level and that's the first level so i can put something that will kind of divide the floors I'm trying to be realistic, but these houses are nothing, nothing realistic. So I have to stop that. And even like here, I can put two smaller windows on the side. Or do I want the one with the lace curtain? I just find that it doesn't, doesn't show enough. In this example because the base of the house is so busy with the the writing so like that like that like that and I just need to add some laces oh I need a chimney too so for the chimney I can use I can use anything this is the beauty of those longer strips like that you can do a snippet roll use it for a snippet roll but you can just take a little portion and uh, and do your chimney so in this case i'm gonna trim and i'm gonna use something here to do the chimney because the writing will kind of match the little house you see and I can maybe, yeah, like that. I'm gonna tear it a little bit so the edges of my chimney is not too straight. Yeah, and I'm gonna ink it. So for the chimney, this is safe to say I can glue the chimney. So I'm gonna put some glue here and place my chimney to the height that I want and then when I'm done I can go this way and see where it goes and add a little bit of glue. This is how I glue. All right, um, this I liked it a lot so this is safe to say that I want to keep it for the window because at some point we need to start the um the options are endless so and this is what's tricky tricky with this kit is that you can go on and on and on and have a really hard time to pick which decoration and paper you're going to use so you really need to stop at some point All right, some of those I printed them on just regular paper because they were my print test. But I strongly suggest that you print your windows and your houses and everything on 67 pounds paper, which is kind of a light cardstock. And this will be uh, sturdy enough it's like this it is soft but it is more sturdy than um than the photocopy paper the 
there's something with the little houses that is pretty addictive. I can't explain it to myself. I cannot say that I was playing with baby dolls and or doll papers when I was young. Nothing like that in my case. So I don't know how come I have the same addiction. <laughs> but it's a reality. So if my windows are a bit too big, I find I can just trim them a little bit more and leave a little bit less of the the off-white around the four squares. You see the difference? And I'm going to ink it, of course. And that would look like that. And I love that. So I'm going to glue. So this is the second level windows. All right. These are all funky a little bit, eh? Nothing is really square and realistic. And this is what I find that makes makes it look really fun. I'll go like that. All right, so I'm going to ink that first. Ink the sides here. And then I'm going to put some glue and I'll see where I want it to fall. Just a little portion of glue and then I'm going to decide where I want it. Maybe like that. And I just need to put the remaining now that I know where it goes. And trim. And re-add some ink. And I'm pretty done with the little house. I just need to add a little bit of laces. So here I can add some laces.
I am back with an almost finished product. I'm gonna show you what I've done. You don't need to see me. But what I've done is I created a signature and I created an open spine cover. So with the um, little house cover with the corrugated cardboard, I put some uh, design paper on both sides and with the cute Crafty Me Shop Lace, I aligned them to make sure it looks aligned and I glued pieces of lace. So this will kind of keep my covers together. Then I've created a signature, like a big chunky signature, and I've put a doily so the finishing here would be the doily and how it's going to be attached it's the open spine um, method so i'm going to show you how i do it and i'm going to use i have that fuzzy fizzy cotton that i bought so i'm going to use the same color for this one and um, this one i'm going to use this one and now I'm going to show you, they are the same inside. I literally did one and then I copied the other one. Of course, the doily is not the same. Like, the doily is not the same. But the pages are like, you have a paper with design. You have um, tracing paper that has been coffee stained piano roll paper and for the piano roll I added some washi tape to make sure it is more uh, sturdy just to make sure it won't get damaged easily or teared then this is an old vintage paper for you know it's a continuous paper it has the holes on each side and it, they're all attached together and I love the grungy noise of that paper. It's perfect for journaling, and but it's making noises. This is just a book page with lines. And these, these are my slim journal of the dressing room kit. And I haven't printed on both sides. So what I did is I added just a line of glue in the middle. I aligned them. And then I did twice all around with the sewing machine. So, and it creates kind of a fluffy feeling. So I love it because I didn't want it to go print them on both sides. I was lazy. Just a book page, music sheet, coffee stain paper, really light. Uh, another kind of paper that I printed like if you uh, love my selection of papers, I'm going to add a link to a video that I did on the paper pads that I buy over and over on Amazon. And you're going to be able to, to see what I'm using as papers and you can just buy them on your side. So another slim page of the dressing room kit. This one, I printed the journaling lines on the other side and coffee stain. This is like a big ledger paper. So I folded it in the middle and then fold it again to keep the most out of it. This is a book page. You know, when you, a book, there's always one or two empty blank page at the beginning or the end of the book. I keep them all. They are just perfect. And the texture is usually different than my printing papers. Printed on tracing paper. Again, I give the link of the pad that I'm using in the video that I made for the paper selections. And again, I did the same. I printed twice and it's gonna be perfect for the middle of the signature here because we're gonna pass the thread like that. So it's a good thing that I have two papers together. It's gonna be more um, robust. And what it looks like, it's 
something like that. My doily just moved slightly like that. And now we're gonna attach it. So I'm gonna attach one on camera and then I'm gonna show you both finished. So what we want to do, ideally, but maybe I've put them too high, we want the, the ribbon sari silk. I could have used uh, this uh, chiffon silk ribbon instead. Um, we want to pass it on top here and at the bottom here and they kind of, we bring them, we we do a knot. I want to do my knot in the middle and leave uh, hanging tails so I can do a closure with it. First thing I need to do is I need to make sure that all my small papers are kind of attached together because, because now I'm going to need to be really on the edges. Like if we look here. I need my paper to be, my hole to be about here and my other hole to be about here. So actually it's not so bad, not so bad, but my smaller papers like this wouldn't, wouldn't hold anywhere. So what I can do is slide it to the bottom and then what I can do is glue it down or add a washi tape so it holds to this one. So in this case, I'm just gonna, because it's really a thin paper, I'll just put some glue in the middle and glue it down like that. Before I fold, before folding, I'm gonna kind of Remove some of the glue so it doesn't glue too much on the side. I just want to make sure that it, it doesn't glue on the flap here. And here you go. So now can I open it? Sure. And like that. It kind of did. It picked the ink. Not sure if I like that. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use washi tape. So this really took the color. I'm going to use washi tape. I think I got it from Staples for my daughter before I even knew what was washi tapes. She got sick of it, and then I discovered junk journals, so I took it because she was not using it. So, okay, I'm going to stick it to my paper here, just the minimum, so it doesn't hide too much of my, my house here. Look at that. Yeah, okay. And... I'm going to hold it like that, place my paper where I wanted it to be, and then just flap it down, and that should work great. Okay, now maybe I should do the same on the other side, just because it did some leaking. So I'm going to do that. want to hide it so this page is secure and now I'm gonna move on to this one so I am now a bit afraid I'm gonna use the washi tape so that one is a cheap one that I got on Aliexpress and I'm not sure how good it is so what I do in that case is I take the inside of a book page that I kept the cover for a junk journal and I'm gonna just add more of the glue stick to the washi tape and 
this way it should hold really well. All right, one there, and I'm gonna put another one. So that's my trick, is that's the way I add some glue to it. Just want to make sure it doesn't slide because otherwise they're not aligned anymore, which is a problem for me because I want them aligned. Okay, and I can maybe just do a little dot where ideally my hole would be. So you see, on the outside here and here of the lace that holds the covers together. Now, if I remove the cover, I keep that together. I'm gonna open it. This one, I might want to place it. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it flat. As long as it doesn't move too much, I'm going to use my crocodile and come do a big hole where I had my little dot designed. All the papers together. And I'm going to do about the same here. That little dot. Here we go. And now I've been going through the signature. And I've been adding either a washi tape. Oh, that makes me think I forgot to redo my hole here. I've been adding some washi tape here to reinforce all the holes or the paper that needed that was fragile. I added the washi tape or one of those reinforcement labels. So see a washi tape here because the hole was really too much on the side. A reinforcement here because it was on the side as well. You know the trick for this? You grab some from Staples or anywhere, as long as it's paper, kind of paper, uh, the reinforcement labels, if they are paper, you just take your sheet and you take your ink and you just go like that. So you can create some of different colors but my favorite is the same ink I'm using all the time that uh, vintage photo so anyway this is how you do that and this is really a thin paper so I'm gonna put one on each side Now I'm gonna measure. So I need to go do the length here. So I'm gonna measure it this way. Then I'm gonna do, then I have to come back. So this is twice the length. Because inside, outside, do a little knot. And then I want to have a tail of about that twice. One at the back, one at the beginning. So let me cut that and measure it for you, just in case you wonder. About 40 inches. I'm gonna start from the inside and I'm gonna go through each paper. I'll try to grab the half of it. 
so I don't have to pull it too much at the end. Okay, so I go through each paper one by one just because I find it's a little bit e um, forgiveful to the paper to avoid tearing it. But if you tear it, I suggest you just put um, a sticker there or a washi tape and you redo the whole you know that's the beauty of chunk journals there's no there's no mistakes there's no problem if we mess up if something happens especially with the shabby chic style Okay, I guess you don't need to see me doing that. I'm going to come back on camera when I'm done, ready to attach it. All right, so I'm done with, I will say, the tread. <laughs> now I need to place my, my doily. And let's see, go through the doily so I can see it fits in this hole. And for this one, well, that would be here. All right, now I place my tread like that. I close the cover. Look at that. And now I can bring it, my treads are almost the same. I can bring it to the middle. You could do the knot here at the top if you don't want a closure you can do a double knot here you can even attach a tassel or do a bow i want to bring my knot in the middle here because i want to use it for the closure so i'm going to bring it in the middle like that twist it you want it to be not so tight but not so loose and I'm going to do a double knot. Bring it on both sides. And here we go. We have a closure. I am done with those two gorgeous journals. They'll be listed in my Etsy shop, the Etsy shop called Odulcina Journals, because the Odulcina shop is uh, only for my digitals, and the Odulcina Journals is for anything else that needs to be shipped. All right, so um, let me open it. Just to show you, you open the closure like that and it opens and you have the doily and you kind of just go through and in the middle page it looks like that. So it's, it's really gorgeous. And the good thing about that is that it's really easy to add new pages because I would just need to undo the knot here add a page, match the holes, and that would be it. Look at this one. Like that. The doily. And of course, this is not decorated. So you can add decoration on the pages but I'm just selling those journals uh, I would say plain <laughs> for you to decorate but adding ruffles and um, whatever you feel for so thanks for watching and I hope it inspires some of you it is absolutely gorgeous I love them see you in the next video bye bye